post it and you can uh, view it and listen to it at a future date and share it with your colleagues. Before we start, I want to do uh, just go over some housekeeping items. All your phones have been put on mute. Um, this is so that there's no distracting background noise, um, that you can hear Dr. Chin very clearly. Um, we will be checking uh, the, the audio from time to time during the next um, presentation. Um, we ask that you, quest, you know, add your questions to the chat box. There is a questions box on your right-hand side. If you could expand that, oh, I'm sorry, it's a chat box. Um, on the right-hand side, with a plus sign, if you can expand that. And at the bottom, you can type in your question. This will be sent to our organizer, and we will be able to ask Dr. Chin your, your question. So. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome you again to the first of several professional development webinars Sadlier will be offering. We are very excited today to have Dr. Beverly Ann Chin with us. Dr. Chin is currently the director of the English teaching program at the University of Montana and the former director of the Montana Writing Project. She is an NCE NCTE past president and the senior project consultant for the 2011 NAEP writing assessment. Dr. Chin served on the Montana Review Committee for the Common Core State Standards. And she travels the country presenting to teachers at various national conferences and almost always has a full house. So we're very happy to have Dr. Chin with us today. Dr. Chin, you can start whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Laura, for that lovely introduction. I'm delighted to be with you today and to present this session on improving sentence fluency and grammar through sentence combining. My PowerPoint is not there. Thank you. Our goal is to help students become competent, confident writers in school and beyond. This presentation will focus on two questions related to this goal. The first question is, how does sentence fluency and grammar contribute to students becoming more competent, confident writers? The second question is, how does teaching sentence fluency and grammar relate to national assessments and to the Common Core state standards? Let's start with NAEP, the nation's report card. I've had the privilege of working with the 2011 NAEP writing assessment, and that includes the development of its holistic rubric and the achievement level descriptors. NAEP looks at three features of writing all in relation to the writer's purpose and the audience for the piece of writing. NAEP looks at the development of ideas, the organization of the writing, and language facility and conventions, including sentence variety and sentence structure. It also looks at grammar, usage, and mechanics. Today's session will focus on these last two pieces, sentence structure and sentence variety, and grammar, usage, and mechanics. And as teachers, we know that these features of writing are, of course, very important to both the meaning and the correctness of a piece of writing. Common Core State Standards also relate to what we're doing today. Standards 1, 2, and 3 for writing emphasize that students write arguments, they write information and explanatory texts, and they write narratives. These are now known as text types and purposes. Those of us familiar with NAEP may realize that NAEP uses the word persuasion, and Common Core State Standards uses argument. But I think many of us as teachers know how similar these 
two purposes and text types are. Also, Common Core State Standards uses the term narratives. NAEP uses the concept of to convey experience, real or imagined. So I just wanted us to be aware of the similarities and differences between NAEP and the Common Core State Standards. Writing Standard 4 asks students to produce clear and coherent writing in which the development, organization, and style are appropriate to task, purpose, and audience. For those of you who are familiar with the 6 plus 1 traits of writing, you'll notice that Common Core State Standards uses the word style to embrace the concepts of word choice, voice, and sentence fluency. Again, sentence fluency is what we are going to be discussing today. Writing Standard 5 in the Common Core State Standards asks students to develop and strengthen writing as needed by planning, revising, and editing. And as we work on sentence fluency and grammar, we will be focusing today on revising and editing. Common Core State Standards also includes language standards. These language standards are on your screen, and it refers to students being able to demonstrate command of conventions of standard written English um, grammar and usage when writing or speaking. Language Standard 2 says students should demonstrate command of the conventions of standard written English for capitalization, punctuation, and spelling when writing. And Language Standard 3 says students should use their knowledge of language and its conventions when writing, speaking, reading, or listening. What I'd like to point out is that Common Core State Standards strongly emphasizes the student's ability to demonstrate knowledge of language. So this demonstration refers clearly to what and how we teach our students to edit and proofread. Today we're going to look at how revising for effective sentences relates closely to editing for correct sentences. Now that we've looked at the 2011 NAEP Writing Assessment and the Common Core State Standards, let's look at what sentence fluency and grammar are, are all about. Um, as, as we're looking at sentence fluency, I want us to be aware that, of course, effective teachers of writing have always helped students become more fluent with their sentences, and we have always helped students become more correct in grammar usage and mechanics. However, I think it's really nice and affirming that NAEP and Common Core State Standards highlight sentence fluency and grammar. So I think that that's very important for all of us as, as teachers of writing. What I'd like to do is to share with you the definition of sentence fluency, which comes from Ruth Cullum, the author of Six Plus One Traits of Writing. Ruth and I have collaborated on many projects, and she was uh, a teacher in the Missoula District uh, back in the 1970s uh, and 80s, so I'm pleased to, to know and work with Ruth. This is the definition of sentence fluency. Sentence fluency is graceful, varied, rhythmic, almost musical. It's easy to read aloud. Sentences are well built. They move. They are varied in structure and length. Each one seems to flow right out of the one before. Strong sentence fluency is marked by logic, creative phrasing, parallel construction, alliteration, and word order that makes the reading feel natural. I think those are lovely sentences in that definition. And and as I read this definition of sentence fluency, and as I work with students on sentence fluency, I'm really struck by the oral and auditory nature of this particular trait. Let's look at the words that are in this definition. Graceful, rhythmic, almost musical, easy to read aloud, flow, creative phrasing, natural. When we teachers see that students need to improve their sentence fluency, we can use the, the strategy of sentence combining, which is an effective classroom-based and research-based strategy that really helps students attend to this rhythm and grace and flow in the written language. 
sentence combining is in fact a revision strategy in which writers take the short sentences and make them longer, more complex sentences. And as students are working with sentence combining, they actually improve the rhythm and flow of sentences in their own writing. I think it's important that we remember that sentence combining is, in fact, revising, which means that students have already a written draft. Hopefully, they've worked on ideas and organization so that by the time they're ready to do sentence combining, they're ready to look at the more specific ways in which their sentences are flowing or not flowing. So let's look at how sentence combining can really help our students. I've mentioned that sentence combining helps students revise for sentence fluency, and we looked at the definition of sentence fluency. It's also important to recognize that sentence combining helps writers discover how language choices influence message and audience. So it's not just the longer the sentence, the better. In fact, the choices and decisions that a writer makes as he or she is revising for sentence fluency really has to be situated in the larger context of a piece of writing. We want students to begin to discover that there is no one way to write a sentence, but there are many ways to write effective sentences. And which choice do, do we hope the students will make as they consider the genre of the writing, the message, and the audience? Also through sentence combining, we're going to be looking at how Sentence combining can help students learn grammar, usage, and mechanics in the context of their own writing. And our research, again, shows that when students are using their own sentences to learn how to proofread and to edit, they remember these uh, conventions of standard written English in more meaningful and deeper and longer ways. We're going to be looking at examples of how to teach sentence combining with these three types of texts and purposes. We're going to look at narrative writing, writing for information and explanatory writing, and arguments and persuasive writing. I wanted to show you how sentence combining works in all three of these text types and purposes. Also, as I show you these different examples, you're going to notice that I'm actually differentiating the types of, of sentence combining strategies that you can use. We know that our students are at different levels of writing proficiency, and as we change the genre or the purpose, they may be more or less challenged um, as they're working on their revision. I'm going to also start with oral language sentence combining, and then move into written sentence combining. And I ask teachers and students to actually do oral language sentence combining before the written language sentence combining for several reasons. One is that in daily conversations, most people speak in fragments and run-ons. So when we ask students to write their first drafts and read their first drafts aloud, many of our students don't hear the need to revise their sentences because it sounds just like they speak. And that's fine. That is fine for first drafts, but as students are polishing their writing for more formal pieces of text, they need to begin to hear more complete, more fluid, and more varied sentence structure. So I will be showing you how I start with oral language sentence combining and then moving to written language sentence combining so that we can actually model the creativity and the variety that all of us use in our oral language on a regular basis. So let's begin with narrative. If you imagine that your students in my class, and I'm going to introduce you to sentence combining, I would like you to notice how I'm going to take the next set of short sentences and combine them into one longer sentence. I'd like you to notice how I rearrange information, how I change parts of speech, perhaps, and how I add or delete words to make my new sentences. Here's the first sentence. When I was a child, I lived near the ocean. 
I was in awe of the ocean. The ocean had waves. I'm going to now model some oral language sentence combining. Here are some possible sentences. When I was a child living near the ocean, I was in awe of its waves. Living near the ocean, I as a child was in awe of its waves. As a child who lived near the ocean, I was filled with awe when I looked at its waves. When I was a child, I lived near the ocean whose waves were awesome. Can't you just imagine some young people saying that sentence? So notice as I did my oral language sentence combining, I changed the order of some of the information, I changed some of my parts of speech, and sometimes I actually added words. But each sentence is complete, and each sentence had a different effect on the message and the audience. Perhaps as you were listening, you were saying, oh, I like that sentence, or hmm, that sentence isn't as powerful as the other sentence. So I as a teacher have done some modeling. Let's look at the continuation of this example. The waves were large. The waves were loud. The waves were powerful. Now at this point, depending on my students' abilities, I could again model oral language sentence combining, or I could say to the students, I would like you to do some sentence combining and try to combine all six of these sentences into one sentence. And say your sentence aloud for the whole class. This allows students to gain some practice again in oral language sentence combining and to hear the diversity and creativity of the sentences that they are putting together. It also reinforces complete sentences. So here are some examples of what I as a teacher or my students might come up with. When I was a child living near the ocean, I was in awe of its large, loud, powerful waves. Living near the ocean, I as a child was in awe of its waves because they were loud, large, and powerful. As a child who lived near the ocean, I was filled with awe, semicolon. Its waves were so loud, large, and powerful. When I was a child, I lived near the ocean whose powerfully large, loud waves were awesome. Notice how I integrated the new information. I changed the order of the information. I changed parts of speech as I created my new sentences. And again, as I said them, perhaps you were saying, oh, I like that one, or hmm, the other one's OK. And again, as a writer, I need to consider which of these sentences I prefer because they have to be situated in the larger piece of writing. It ha I have to consider my purpose and my audience. So it's not just that the longer sentences are better. They also have to fit into the complete piece of writing that I'm creating. Notice in one of them, I actually said semicolon, because I wanted to make one long sentence. But if I said semicolon, then you, the listeners, would know that this is one sentence. That's another example, too, of how uh, the conventions of English can be integrated into sentence combining. Here is the last sentence. The waves crashed onto the beach. Again, based on my students' ability and comfort level, I could ask my students now to do their own oral sentence combining using these same seven sentences. Or if the students had already done their own oral language sentence combining, they may want to write their new sentences, again, using all pieces um, of this information. Let's look at what some of the examples might be that students come up with. When I was a child living near the ocean, I was awed by its large, loud, powerful waves that crashed into the beach. Living near the ocean as a child, I was awed by the ocean's waves, large, loud, powerful, as they crashed onto the beach. Notice with those, we have dashes as another punctuation mark that we might be teaching. And the last one, large, loud waves powerfully crashing onto the beach, awed me as a child who lived near the ocean. Just by looking at these written sentences, you can begin to see also where one might be teaching some of the grammar, some of the punctuation, and some of the usage. I wanted to share with you how you can also use sentence combining in an information or explanatory selection of writing. Again, I might start with 
um, modeling the I do um, with, I'm, with my model and then going to the we do. So in this one, imagine that the students are writing about an event. And in this event, they have short sentences, such as the room was decorated, banners decorated the room, balloons decorated the room, the room was filled with people. Um, here are some examples, again, for oral language sentence combining that we, the teacher, might be modeling or that we might ask students to do. We could say, decorated with banners and balloons. The room was filled with people. People filled the room, which was decorated with banners and balloons. So again, after I model this, I might invite students to then do their own sentence combining on these four sentences and then add some more. The people were celebrating. The celebration was for the school library. The school library was opening. The library was new. Notice in these sentences, many of the verbs are was. And so sentence combining enables students to use better verbs, stronger verbs, more descriptive verbs in their information or explanatory writing. Notice also that in this format, I've removed the numbers. This is a way to differentiate. Some students need to have the numbers for their sentence combining. And then we might move towards removing the numbers to see if students can do the sentence combining in a comfortable fashion. Again, you need to know your students and decide where their comfort level is and how we can support them. Here are some examples of combined sentences for the information or explanatory writing. And again, notice the punctuation that we could be reinforcing, or notice the descriptive um, uh, adjectives that we could be using to help students with their modification. Decorated with balloons and banners, the room was filled with people celebrating the new school library, which had just opened. People celebrated the opening of the new school library in the room that was decorated with banners and balloons. Balloons and banners decorated the room in which people celebrated the opening of the new school library. Now, sentence combining can also be used for persuasive writing or argument. So I'd like us to imagine that students are writing in response to a prompt such as, should people be allowed to hunt gray wolves? And this topic, this question, is a very timely one in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, and other parts of the West. So in this particular example, you will notice that there are short sentences, but they are not in a list form. They actually are in a paragraph form. This is another form of differentiation because so many of our students, when they're looking at their own sentences for sentence um, revision and for sentence fluency, they actually see this format of writing. And so this is more challenging for students to do sentence combining because it's not in a numbered list. It's not even in a list. And it looks very much like some of our students' perhaps rough draft. Here are the sentences. Some people support the hunting of gray wolves. Gray wolves are on the endangered species list. Gray wolves are predators. Gray wolves often attack the livestock of ranchers. Again, I might do oral language sentence combining. The students might then do some oral language sentence combining. And then we would move to the written form of sentence combining, always wanting to support students with their creativity. Here are some of the examples of those sentences in a combined form. Some, some people support the hunting of gray wolves and endangered species because these predators often attack ranchers' livestock. Even though gray wolves are on the endangered species list, some people support the hunting of these predators, which often attack the livestock of hunters, of, excuse me, of, of ranchers. They attack hunters too sometimes. Because gray wolves often attack ranchers' livestock, some people support the hunting of these predators that are on the endangered species list. As students are combining these sentences, either orally or in written language, we, the teachers, should have a discussion with students about which of these sentences might be used to support the hunting of gray wolves, and which of these sentences might be more effective in an argument against the hunting of the gray wolves. And this discussion really reinforces writing as a decision-making process. It teaches students that as they craft their sentences, they need to be mindful of how their sentences affect the message and the audience. Throughout these examples of sentence combining in narrative, 
explanatory and argumentative writing. I've been sharing with you the modeling of the teacher, which is often known as the I do, and then suggesting the guided practice uh, where the students are in the classroom uh, trying out their oral language and then trying out the written language. That's often known as the we do strategy or the guided practice step of we do. And then ultimately what we want students to do is the you do, where they actually take out their pieces of writing and look for places where they can apply sentence combining strategies. Sometimes I ask students to pick their second or third paragraph to try out a sentence combining. And as students are trying out their sentence combining, they might then turn to a writing partner, and the student might read the original sentences, and then the new sentences through sentence combining, and together have a discussion on how the sentences work within the larger piece of writing, and which sentences are more effective for the purpose and the message and the writing style of the author. Again, we need to emphasize that longer sentences are not always better. We really do want flow and variety of sentence beginnings and structures and lengths. But the sentences do need to flow into the context of the overall piece of writing. We've seen how sentence combining helps students with revising for sentence fluency. But sentence combining also can teach grammar. It can emphasize meaning as well as correctness. Sentence combining can show relationships among purpose, audience, and genre, or text types and purposes. And sentence combining connects revision and editing. So let's look at how that does that. Sentence combining offers teachable grammar moments. Teachable grammar moments. I really like that phrase. So for example, um, as we did sentence combining, you'll notice that we were using phrases and clauses. We were using participles. We were using dependent and independent clauses. We were doing adjectives and adverbial uh, clauses. All of that can be taught when students then write their new sentences. As students write their new sentences, we can help them proofread for subject and verb agreements. We can help students see where parallel structures might be uh, used correctly and appropriately, uh, especially for the more advanced students. Modification is a great um, teaching opportunity here. Um, often known as misplaced modifiers. And so sometimes when students are doing sentence combining, they may need to have a review of modification. And punctuation, especially commas, can be reviewed for correctness and effectiveness when students are writing their um, new combined sentences. Sentence fluency and sentence, um, sentence combining can really help students when they're being assessed at the state or national levels. Most state and national assessments, including SAT and ACT, ask students to demonstrate their writing ability in one of two ways. One way is that students demonstrate their ability to write by responding to a prompt. The prompts are often uh, explanatory or they are persuasive. When students have learned through sentence combining um, how to write more fluently and effectively, this appears when they're writing on demand to a prompt in a timed situation. Students also are asked to demonstrate their language knowledge and their ability to write by answering multiple choice items. For example, in some of these multiple choice uh, assessments, parts of a sentence or entire sentences are underlined, drawing students' attention to a problem in that sentence. And then there are these items A, B, C, and D, or 1, 2, 3, 4, that ask the student which of these choices would be the most effective or the most correct way of addressing the issue that's underlined. And again, through sentence combining, when we use sentence combining for both revision and for editing, students will be better able to demonstrate their knowledge of language conventions in these multiple choice items. In summary, then, Sentence combining shows the importance of sentence fluency in students' own writing. It integrates writing and grammar instruction, again, in students' own writing. Sentence combining really emphasizes writing as a decision-making process in which the writer always must consider the purpose, the text type or genre, and the audience. Sentence combining develops competent confident writers, and it engages students as active, lifelong learners. 
If you'd like to read more about the Common Core State Standards or the NAEP Writing Framework, this slide shows you the websites that are available for you to review. I'd like to call your attention to Writing Next, Effective Strategies to Improve the Writing of Adolescents in Middle and High Schools. Writing Next is a compilation and a meta-analysis of effective strategies based on research and sentence combining is a highly effective, highly recommended strategy for all of us to use to help our students with writing uh, fluency and correctness. I've also written several articles that are available on the Sadler Oxford uh, website. I have written actually five articles. These two articles, Teaching Meaningful Revision, Developing and Deepening Students' Writing, and Teaching Writing in the Context of Common Core State Standards, are my two newest white papers. They are filled with both research and practical ways of helping students become better writers. The other three articles that I've written that are available on this website also give you more ideas for teaching sentence combining with even more examples for how you can help your students with sentence fluency and grammar. Thank you, Dr. Chin, um, for that very informative presentation. Um, I want to uh, reiterate to our audience that if they have a question, they can type it in the chat box at the uh, lower right-hand side of your um, screen. Um, so go ahead and, and type in your questions. Um, we do have a few questions already. Um, so Dr. Chin, if you're ready, we can, uh, we can start while others may be typing. Wonderful. OK, the first one we have uh, is, uh, here it goes. How often should teachers do sentence combining? That's a great question. Because sentence combining is such an effective strategy, I would encourage teachers to use sentence combining after students have worked on ideas and organization, and then as they're getting ready to polish their writing for sentence fluency. That sentence combining is a wonderful way to help students really look at the sentence level of their craft, and then moving into the proofreading editing stage. Mm -hmm. However, we don't want it to become just routine. We really want it to be creative, generative, to promote discussion, reflection. So it's important that we use sentence combining on a regular basis, but not in a quote unquote routine basis. OK. We have another one. <laughs> um, how do teachers know when to transition from oral to written sentence combining? Oh, that's another great question. I watch my students. So if my students are at the level where three short sentences is what they can handle before they move into the writing, then I will have a lot of oral sentence combining from many, many students in the classroom on those three sentences, maybe a fourth. But when students begin to say, oh my gosh, there are so many sentences, I can't keep it straight. May I please write? May I please write? Yes, please write your sentence down. So it's, it's based on the student's developmental level and um, their comfort with the kind of information that's being shown in the particular sentence combining exercise. There is no one magic number like five sentences, 10 sentences, whatever. It really depends on the student's comfort level and their oral language facility. But the more we do it, the more challenging it becomes. And it almost becomes like a game. Boy, can I do that in oral language when there are seven sentences? Let's try eight. No, nope, no, nope, I have to write. OK, thank you. What should teachers do if students make a grammar grammatical error in their oral sentence combining? When students are combining their sentences orally, I really want to focus on um, them getting the information in a logical, coherent form in a complete sentence. I would transition to correctness when they actually start writing their sentences and are in the editing proofreading stage. I don't want students to become so worried about correct oral grammar language 
that they start shutting down when they're doing the oral language sentence combining. The oral language sentence combining should be joyful. It should be creative. It should be fun. Everybody should be rooting for each other. Yes, yes, yes. That was a really good sentence. Then when students begin to write those sentences, that's what I would reintroduce, the correctness, the subject-verb agreement, the dangling modifiers, the parallel constructions. I want to keep that oral language fluency and creativity going, though, during the oral language sentence combining. And sometimes students will hear and will pick up on each other and will tactfully um, do their own sentences in a different form, but we never want to embarrass somebody in oral language. Okay, thank you. Uh, one last question is uh, about getting a copy of this PowerPoint, and the answer is, is yes, you will be. Um, so what I'm going to do, here's a, a slide of Beverly's uh, contact information. Um, we want to thank Beverly uh, for being so kind to give us this information. She encourages uh, the audience to contact her. Uh, with questions about her her work and any of the articles that she's written or the programs that she's written. Um, I'm briefly going to uh, review with you the series Grammar for Writing program for grades 6 through 12, um, which is a research-based program. Um, it is a program that Beverly was the senior consultant for, um, and it has some high-quality program features um, that will help your students not only gain uh, the skills of writing, um, but also pra uh, test practice for standardized testing. Um, and it has robust online components. Um, okay, let me, okay. Um, the focus for uh, grammar for writing is that it is it consists of a of tools for effective writing. Um, it has the writing process and strategies. It has forms um, and models of good writing, sentence level skills, and and timed essay writing lessons, which is really important for today's kids as they um, go through their standardized testing. Every unit lesson starts off with authentic passages, which actually sets high standards and helps model effective writing. Um, there's annotations in the columns that give the students elements um, for good writing. There are critical thinking um, opportunities which really are good for students to hear or you know to read about why they're writing in such a way. What are the techniques? And sentence writing techniques um, really strengthens the personal personalized style of each of the students' writing. Of course, we have the pre-writing, drafting, revising, and editing steps, along with graphic organizers organizers. And then new to this, new feature to this series is the timed essay writing, as I said earlier, which is quite important for SAT practice and ACT practice. But it's not only about effective writing, it's also about the skills. So Grammar for Writing actually is a beautiful program that consists of tools for writing correctly. So the essential concepts are absolutely identified clear to the students of how to write correctly. They have cross-references to areas that um, perhaps the skill was previously um, introduced, or they're ready to expand that skill, and they can go to another page. We have step-by-step -step features for the student and the teacher. Might be another strategy of teaching it, another way of introducing this skill. But to enhance their students' skills for writing, we have writing hints, enriching vocabulary, editing tips, and test-taking tips, all to help the students feel a little more competent and confident on their writing. And every lesson has 
revising and editing worksheets. So they can take not only their own writing, but a new version, a new uh, piece of writing that they will be able to edit and revise. So what tools do we have for the teacher? Uh, grammar for writing grades 6 through 12 can be used in a variety of ways. Uh, first, it can be, be used as a complete course for uh, these grades or as a reference tool. It can be used as a handbook for independent or group learning or as a review and practice for standardized tests. The features of the teacher's uh, guide has all the annotations with keys, answer keys. It has strategies for grammar instruction, ideas for writing, assessment rubrics for helping the teacher to evaluate writing, and other strategies to help the teacher um, teach her grammar, writing, and mechanics skills. We have very robust online support. We have checklists for instructions, including the editing and proofreading checklist, and strategies for the English language learner. So uh, the teacher will have a checklist of strategies to help these learners. The assessment for grammar for writing um, is are very robust. It starts out with uh, progress monitoring types of assessments. After every chapter, there's a review and cumulative reviews um, of the unit. Uh, there's preparation for high stakes tests, so it's in the same format as what they're going to um, experience with the ACT and the SAT. Um, as I said earlier, there's rubrics for evaluating student writing. It's quite, you know, you have to be kind of keen on those skills and have, uh, we want to help the teachers with their evaluating of their students' writing. And also there's um, assessment in separate test booklets for diagnostic tests and tests for mastery. There's more practice sheets and tests online. But online, what we're very proud of is the online support tool. Very robust. We have um, every grade level has uh, units identified, simple to get to. We have practice tests there, additional practice tests. And we have writing prompts. We have writing prompts that will offer not only topics, but hyperlinks to websites with more information. So it's encouraging uh, referencing and, and, and other resources so that um, the, teach, uh, the students can go and research the topics. Very affordable and practical. The components consist of student editions, annotated teacher's editions, student test booklets, and then the free, robust online uh, uh, access, which has is password protected. We want to thank you for uh, participating in today's um, webinar. Dr. Chin, thank you very much for your time and your energy and your expertise. Uh, we love working with you. Um, and everyone online, we, you will be receiving an email with a downloaded, uh, <laughs> with a link to download the newest white paper that Dr. Chin has written, along with a, um, a version of this PowerPoint to share with your colleagues if you've missed it. We will have a, um, um, a recording of this PowerPoint um, and presentation posted on our website, and we will give you the link to that as well. We have one last question. Do you have grammar for writing for the lower grades? Um, we do not. We, we have a, a program called Grammar Workshop, and we can send you that uh, information to that um, participant that, uh, that asked that question. If you could, um, we have your name, OK? So thank you again, Dr. Chin, for your time. And everyone on the line, uh, we appreciate your time. We know you're very busy. We will be contacting you and uh, inviting you to other uh, professional development webinars in the near future. Thank you.